right? So these scales here are like are like what in algebra? An equation, yeah, it's just like an equation, okay? That equal sign is a very important, it means something very specific, and if you respect what it is trying to tell you, then uh, it'll go a long way. Um, equations, both sides are what? Equal. Equal. Balanced, right? Balanced like these balanced scale things. All right, so let's see how it works. Just simply, you're gonna put three on one side, on the other. So you've got singles and fives there. So three here, three. So uh, what equation are we looking at here? It doesn't have to be perfect language. It's got to be fast. Fast and accurate. But not. There you go. What's the equation we're looking at here? It is Well, we talked about this before, but if I take this off on this side, what just happened? It's not equal. It's not equal, right? I took something off on this side, clearly nothing's happened to this side, it's just as heavy as it was before, uh, and this is now lighter, so it's off. So what do we need to do? Take one off on the other side. To make it equal. Take one off the other side. Okay, so we can take one off the other side, or on the scale, we can put one here, right? Because that's going to pull up on it, just like taking one off would allow it to rise up. So we have negative numbers here in this tray. And these red ones are, are negative. Okay? So now what's the equation? Negative 1 plus 2 equals Negative 1 plus 3 equals 2. Yeah. Okay, so we're getting the idea here. Take them all off. You can, uh, like, well, you can just drag a box around the ones you just used. A box? Oh, yeah, just, that. just, yeah, like that. Mm -hmm. And then you can hit the X, and you can do it on the other one. Yeah. There you go. All right, so let's look at uh, another equation, a simple one here. Um, so what do we have here? It's a... Uh, it's a variable, right? It's x. You don't know what's in here. You don't know what it's worth. Right? So we have to manipulate the scales to find out how much one of these is worth. And I'll tell you that two of them is the same as four. Okay. Real simple equation, right? Uh, your intuition tells you <coughs> that one of these canisters marked X is worth how much? Two. 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 Got to be right because if we if we split this in two, split this in two, we can see a correlation one X with one X. How do we do it? Uh, actually, how do we leave it so that we see the equate the equal the equality between X and two? Okay. How do we do that? How do we how do we get rid of an X and get rid of two of these. What mathematical operation? We can't, can we just subtract x from this side? Minus x. If we subtract x from this side, what do we have to do to the other side? Subtract, subtract x, because let's pretend we don't know what x is worth. We would subtract x, we could put x in the negative, but that doesn't really get us there, right? It gets us x equals two minus x. Which again, we could figure that out. We could figure out what it is, but subtracting x is what we want to do. How do we get rid of an x over here without having to subtract x on the other side? What's that? Square root. What, David? The square the root. The square root? Yeah. The square root. Uh, what's the square root of 2x? Like x squared then? If huh? there's two x's, isn't it x squared? Oh wait, is this x squared? Yeah. No. Or x, is, x squared is x times x. 
But this is just the existence of 2x is x plus x. So just 2x, maybe. Can you just divide both sides by 2? Yeah, let's take, let's look at half of this versus half of that. Half of this side would be 1 of the x's. Half of this side would be 2 of the disks. And so now x is the balance that's equal with 2. Okay? so far on this side of the equation? Four y's. Four times y. y plus y plus y plus y. Four y. Alright. Um, now what do we have on this side? Four y plus x. Four y and plus another x. Okay, now on this side, Got, got these in stacks of five, four stacks of five. So four stacks of five, and then four more. Stack them on top of each stack there. Okay, so you have to maybe believe me when I say these are supposed to balance out. Um, so now what we want to do, just like we solved for x a second ago, we're going to solve for y. We'll see how that looks a little different though. But what we want to do is get y on its own, by itself. So how do we get only one y on this side? Or one y on this side, if we wanted to do that somehow. Subtract an x from both sides, okay? Mm -hmm. We'll subtract an x from this side, okay? So that, that x is gone. And I, I'm taking this away from you because I don't want you to be mistaken. Uh, I'm not moving it from one side to the other, okay? So we've taken an x off of this side, so what do we have to do on the other side? Subtract. How do we subtract x when there's no x? Mm -hmm. We can't take away an x. Would you divide by y? Divide by, well, we're just still on the x thing. We've subtracted an x. What's that? Does x have to be worth something specific? That's a question. Couldn't we, like, as x changes, as I put different stuff into x, right, this, and x becomes, say, heavier, okay, this is balanced right now, I, I put more stuff into x, well, then I would just have to take things out of y. Y would have to be worth less, right? And then it could balance out. But we're still at the question, when we take away x, how do we take away x over here without any x being there? Subtract by x. Subtract x. What does that look like? What is that? Put it on the red, right? That's, that would be subtraction. That's taking weight away from this pan right here. OK? So now we have. Is there a question? No. Nope. Okay. We have 4y, and here we have how much? 24 and minus x. So 4y equals 24 minus x. How are we going to get y by itself on this side now? Is that? Divide by 4. Divide by 4. So if we divide by 4, we're looking at 1 fourth of this side. Then we're going to divide this thing by 4, right? So this is highlighting the fact we have to divide both sides by 4. Not just this, but we would also, like, I'll divide this by 4. But if I just divide that by 4, it's off. It's, it's not balanced. I still need to divide this by 4, which means I need to divide both sides by 4. And I can almost guarantee... How many do you have left on that? Uh, six. OK, 
okay with your table. That's okay. All right. So I can almost guarantee that several of you are going to just do this. Just divide one side by something. Now, it might not be as simple as dividing by 4. You might not make that mistake. But what if we divide by 2x or something, or x times q, or something odd looking like that? Whatever we're dividing by, we need to divide the same thing on both sides. Because if we don't, we're not respecting the equality of both sides. So this is how much right here in this red pan? Well, it's just x, yeah. It's, yeah. We don't know if it's 2. We don't know if it's 8. We don't know what it is. It doesn't have to be anything specific. As x changes, we can change y so that it could be balanced. But still, this is not right. So we need to divide this by 4. So what will we wind up with? One fourth of an x. So now, because I don't want to cut this up into pieces, I'll use one that I know is one fourth of that x. Okay, so now it's one fourth of x. We just write a one fourth on top. I have on mine. Okay, now they're balanced. Okay, so I'll ask again. We've talked about this several times. Is x worth something, some number specifically? Does it have to be some specific number? Or could it be several different things? Right. If x is 8, then what would y be? If x is 8, then what would y be? 2. 2? Oh. We've got 6, right? Minus x. Oh, this, this 8, and I'm, I'm forgetting there's a 1 fourth right there. 8 times 1 fourth would be 2, right? Plus the 6. Plus the 6. What, but eight. is it 2? It's, it's well, red. You, it was, you said it was x equals 8, right? Yeah, x equals said, 8. So then 1 fourth x would be 2. Right. Plus the 6, that's right there. Minus 2. Right, but the, yeah, what I'm saying is that the, that the 2 that you're getting correctly is in the red pan. Negative. It's negative. Oh, uh, so. So 6 minus 2, this would have to be 4. Right. So if I open this up, and we took out 8 disks, then we would know we'd have to get 2 out of here. Okay. So as x changes, y changes. Could I make x into uh, 4? Can I make x 4? Anything wrong with that? No, x could be 4. That would be fine. Uh, y would just have to change to compensate. So because x can change and then y changes along with it, <coughs> going back to section 2.1, that's what we call a function. And y is a function of x. As x changes, it affects y. If you want to know y, then you need to know what x is to start with. Okay. We could switch it around and we could solve for x, and then we'd have, we could say x is a function of y. You'd have to know what y is to figure out what x is. Okay. But in the end, when we approach the stuff we're going to do today, you need to realize that what we need on one side is one of the variables by itself. If we wind up with a y over here and a y's on the other side, that's no good, right? And if we have uh, several y's on this side, that's not what we want either. We want a single y and then everything else on the other side, or m or r or whatever it is we're solving for. Okay. The same stuff that we do with numbers, dividing both sides, subtracting, adding, multiplying, it's all the same. If we need to, instead of dividing by 4 like we did here, if we need to divide by uh, pi times r, then we divide by pi times r because it's multiplied by the variable that we're trying to isolate. The same properties apply. Divide both sides by the same thing, subtract both sides uh, with the same thing, and so on. Okay. So. So to do today's assignment on this would be incredibly impossible, right? To divide things into, you know, to wind up with five sixths of an x or something strange like that. That's really going to be tedious on you. But I want you to see physically the balance between both sides. And the fact that if you choose to divide just one piece of it by 4, it's going to be off kilter. If you divide one piece of it by q, it's going to be off. It's got to be the entire sides have to have those things down to them. So I'll put these away. Thanks, Michael. Applause for Michael. I mean, that was sad. That was a sad applause. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Michael. Wait, hold on. For helping me out. Um, have we got extra credit in here yet? No. 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 Okay, so we're going to not look. We're going to pick out of here. What'd you get? Black. Oh, that's one point.
All right, so let's open up to 1.4. And over and over again, I'm going to reference the fact that what you're manipulating is an equation that both sides are exactly the same, and you cannot change that. It has to stay the same. That will solve a lot of your issues that you uh, commonly run into. By you, I mean the collective public. Let's start off with one that's pretty basic. equation, absolutely. It does have variables in it. Huh? It's a standard form of what kind of equation? Equation of a line. It's a linear equation. Yeah. It's in standard form. So if we solve for y, what form will it be in? Y equals mx plus b. Y intercept uh, or slope intercept form. Okay, so let's get y by itself. So basic How are we going to start to get y by itself? Subtract 6x from both sides. 5y equals, let's say, negative 6x plus 31, just because that's the order we're used to. Now we don't want 5y, we want just 1y, so how do we get y by itself? Mm -hmm. Divide by 5. It doesn't really matter what's over here, right? It just matters what you want, what you need to do to get the variable by itself. So if you need to divide by 5, you need to divide by 5. Divide by 5, divide this entire side by 5. <coughs> A lot of times what'll happen, especially if one of these is divisible by five, we'll just divide that one by five and not the other thing. If this were five or if this were 30, you'd be really tempted to just divide one of those by five and leave the other alone. But you can't do that. Um, so if I want to say, divide that by five, then how would I continue to write the right side of this equation correctly? What would the rest of that look like? Michael? Uh, 31 by 5. And you got to divide 31 by 5 as well. Remember, division and multiplication are very similar. They're related. And the same way that multiplication would distribute across both of these things, division needs to distribute to both of these things. For both of them, you get divided by 5. And you can write it slightly differently so it's a little more familiar, but that's it. We solved for y. It doesn't look good. It uh, can't be simplified at all, but if we did solve for y, we didn't get y by itself. That is what y is worth. I'll let you uh, try one on your own. Like number 12. Right? One's on your own work, so I'll save you some time. Do it in class. Several people <clears throat> first subtract 10x. Most people that I looked on the papers, that's what they had at least. Okay. 
And now, don't worry about this side. Just look at this side. This is the side you're trying to isolate y on. How do you get y by itself? You know, it's multiplied by negative 18. Divide by? Divide by? What? Um, negative 18. Negative 18. Okay. I see sometimes people dividing by th something like eight, negative 18 y. But if you did that, this side would be you know, the 18s would cancel, common factor of 18. And then the y's would cancel, common factor of y. Most of the time, they still get it right because they don't actually divide by y. Just um, careful. Don't get into those bad habits that confuse you later on. We have negative 10 uh, over negative 18 times x. Let's just say minus 84 over 18. Let's see. So negative divided by negative is positive. 10 and 18 share a factor of 2. 5 ninths of x. Minus 4, 18, Well, they have a common factor of 6, correct? Yeah. What is it? 14. 14. So it's, it's probably safest to break them up into several fractions. If you leave it as one fraction and you want to simplify, just be careful that you cancel out the same factor among all of them. Right? These have a common factor of 2. These also have a common factor of 2. These also have a common factor of 3, but this does not have a common factor of 3, so you can't cancel out 6 among all of them. You can just go as far as 2. Because 2 would need to be a factor of the numerator and the denominator. So what three needs to be. We'll deal with that more in a minute. Now you see where x is equal to something in those problems. Uh, number nine, x is equal to negative four. Number 12, x is equal to six. Okay. Really strongly advise you to uh, mm, solve for y first. Because you could put negative four in there before you did any solving into the, the exact form that it's given to you, and then figure out what y would be, right? Because all the x's would turn to numbers, and all that stuff would combine, and then we can solve for y. But then you don't learn anything about manipulating equations with several different variables in them, which is something that, at least in this class, we need to be able to do. So, just a word of advice. Okay, now let's go to 18. to solve for r. You get r by itself. You see r is multiplied by 2, and it's also multiplied by pi, it's also multiplied by w. So any ideas for where we can start to get r by itself? Divide by 2 pi. Divide by the whole thing? Is that okay? Should I do it one at a time? Is there any reason to do that? No. Maybe, maybe not. Let's see. Uh, well, we're hoping that we can just cancel out the 2 with the 2, the 5 with the 5, the W with the W, right? Um, when you want to simplify a fraction like this, then when are you allowed to do that? When are you allowed to simplify a fraction? What are you crossing out when you cross out those? numbers like we do 9, 12, so we cross out this, we get 3 and 4. What are we really eliminating between 9 and 24, or 9 and 12? Same fraction. Yeah, we're not changing the value of the fraction, but there is something that we are, we're canceling out, we're crossing out, right? It did change in a sense. This fraction is the same size as this fraction, but, you know, why did it change? How did we change it? Numbers. Different numbers that have the same ratio. We're, we've crossed out a common. A common what of three? What? Uh, let's see, that's in the ballpark. It's not a multiple. Denominator? No. Factor. It's a common factor. 
common factor. This is 3 times 3. This is 3 times 4. Because it's 3 times 3, 3 is a factor. That's the definition of a factor. If you're a factor, right, if you personally are a factor of another number, you prove that you're a factor of that number by multiplying yourself by another number to get the product. So you ask 3, are you a factor of 12? He says yes. So they say prove it. He multiplies himself by 4 and we get 12. Okay? That's the proof that you're a factor. That's the definition of being a factor. That's the definition of dividing a number, is that you can multiply by another number to make that, uh, that product. Okay. So those common factors can be canceled out because really 3 divided by 3 is 1. So we now have 3 fourths times 1. Okay, that's good. All right. We can write this as 2 over 2 times pi over pi times r over 1 times w over w, what we've got written here. I'm going to make sure we do the same thing on both sides. This is 1, and this is 1, and this is 1, and that just leaves r. a over 2 pi w equals r. It's exactly the same as uh, something like this. If you had a, you had a equals uh, 75r something times r, what would you do to get r by itself? Just divide by 75. Right? Divide by, what is this number called? When you multiply a number by a variable, what's this number called? Not the base. The base would be like 3 is the base here. The word I'm looking for starts with a C. Const, not constant, because this is part of a whole term. This can change as R changes. Michael? Coefficient. Coefficient, yeah. The number that you multiply by a variable is called the coefficient. So R has a coefficient. If you divide by that coefficient, that coefficient gets canceled out on that side, and then we just have the variable by itself. Well, over here, the coefficient is 2 pi w. We can put w right over there in front of R, and we have 2 pi w r, which would be the same thing as 75 r, it's just something times r, and divide it away. separating this r out, which would be the same thing, we just didn't multiply by pi. So pi times, so we're distributing here, times r uh, h plus r k. Okay, distribute the r. Distribute again. Distribute the pi. Distribute the pi. S equals pi r h plus pi r k. Okay. Now there's no more parentheses, that's good. That's helpful. Yep. Can you like plug in the number? Like plug in like K. No, that's the thing that I'm saying. See, I'm gonna be really unimpressed if we figure out what R is worth. Right? That doesn't need that doesn't matter. If we if we replace all these things with numbers and then combine like terms and do the same thing we've always done. It's going to be really unimpressive. And it won't build that skill set that you need to manipulate equations that don't have knowns. If I didn't give you those knowns, if the, if the book didn't choose to put those knowns in there, you'd still, I'd want you to isolate H in this case. So that's what I was saying earlier. Don't do that until you're at the very end when H is equal to something. Subtract pi RK. Okay? That get you know this stuff can 
can go away, and that'd be great because H would be more isolated, not completely isolated, but more. S minus pi R K equals pi R H. Divide by pi r, just like we similarly did on this other equation over here. So pi r, divide the whole thing by pi r. So s minus pi r k over pi r equals h. Michael? On uh, my uh, problems that use pi, yep. do you want us to leave pi in that form or write it as 3.14? Just leave it as pi, because this is exactly right. 3.14 is approximately. H is equal to that stuff. Anything else we can do? Cancel Okay. I wanted you to fall into that trap and you fell into it exactly as I thought. Okay? So we're gonna talk about that. We're probably gonna talk about this just like every time we do fractions, right? But if one person converts over each time, that'll be great. Okay. Um, let's go back to this is gonna be kind of a long explanation, but it's thorough, it's correct, it's, it's mathematical, all right? So let's go back to this example of, say, 9 over 12. Can we simplify 9 over 12? Why? The common factor of 3. Just couldn't use any more or less words, it's just perfectly put. They have a common factor of 3, okay? We can write this as 3 times 3 over 3 times 4, and, and why do we, we just cross them out, right? We use a line, that's not really a mathematical concept. What, what are we really saying when you cross out these two threes? What is this cancellation that happens mathematically? We're close, that they don't equal, equal zero. Equal one. They equal one, right? Three divided by three is one. And so 3 divided by 3 becomes 1, and 1 times 3 fourths just leaves 3 fourths. Okay? So we're going to say it again. If you can cancel things out between the numerator and denominator, it's because they have what? Common what? Factors. Common factors. These have a common factor of 3. If there's something you want to cancel out, if you're tempted to cancel it out, it has to be a common factor between the numerator and denominator. Not part of the numerator, not part of the denominator, but the entire numerator and the entire denominator. Okay? Now what does it mean to be a factor? You can multiply it by, you multiply it by something else. I can multiply 3 by another 3 to get 9, so 3 is a factor of 9. I can multiply 3 by a 4, and I can get 12, so 3 is a factor of 12. Also, 4 is a factor of 12, because 4 times 3 is 12. Okay? If you can multiply the thing in question by something else and get the numerator or get the denominator, then it's a factor. Okay, so let's come back over here. What we want to do, or we're tempted to do, is cross out pi r. Is pi r, let's look at the denominator, is pi r a factor of the denominator? Can you multiply pi r by something and get pi r? One. one. You multiply by one, sure. So yeah, it's a factor of itself. All numbers are factors of themselves. Okay. Is pi r a factor of the numerator? Okay, so think about this. I can multiply pi r by 1 to get pi r. So it's a factor of pi r. Can I multiply pi r by something and get s minus pi r k? Okay. Maybe, Maybe multiply it by, by s. Multiply it by s. Okay, so let's, let's move over here. So we're saying pi r times, you know, mystery thing. I'm not sure, but we're saying maybe it's s. S? Well, the, you have to get the the numer to turn the denominator into the numerator. Okay. Uh, no, to turn it's just a different way of writing the numerator. What yeah. we want to write is is rewrite the numerator okay. so that it's pi r times something, just yes. like we would run take twelve and write it as three times something, uh -huh. so that we have common factors of three. That'd be pi r times s minus k. Okay, not a bad idea. Okay. Because when we distribute the pi r, we'll get minus pi r k. But what will we get when we multiply pi r by s? S times pi r. Or pi r times s, or you know, whatever order we, we choose. Well, is that the numerator? 
well, if it were the numerator, then pi r would be a factor because I just wrote it as pi r times something. But it didn't work. Okay, well, let, let's maybe we just didn't find the right combination of stuff. Uh, so s minus k didn't work. The minus k part did, though. Maybe we'll just leave that. Minus k works. That we definitely got that minus pi r k. Can we put something here so that we multiply pi r by that? We get just s. What do you think? Yes or no? Do you think it's a separate parentheses? OK. You're, yeah, I mean, you're throwing ideas out there. Like, I like the, that you're, you're trying something. But uh, I can tell you that's, that's not going to lead us down into being profitable. Because those parentheses within parentheses, you're going to have to you know, combine them, and they're going to have to be something anyway. They're going to have to it would make up this thing anyway. So it's not a bad thought, you know, drifting around in your head. Can you put something there? Well, think of this. Whatever you multiply pi r by, whatever this thing is, in the end, it's going to get multiplied by pi r. So you're going to have pi times r times that thing. But we don't want pi times r times it. We just want s by itself without any pi r. So do you, does it seem like there's something you can put there? And when you multiply by pi r, you wind up with just s? No. No, at least not anything very simple. So what did we conclude? What did we just find out? We just decided that we pi r cannot turn it. Pi r, right, exactly. Pi r cannot be multiplied by something, something in parentheses, and give you s minus pi r k. Which means, since we can't do that, means that pi r is not what? A factor, factor of the numerator. Yeah. And if it's not a factor of the numerator, as 3 is in this example, then you can't cancel it out of the numerator. That's what we're canceling. When we cancel things, we're canceling common factors. Yeah. And clearly, we've shown pi r is not a factor of the numerator. So there will be no canceling out of pi r in the numerator in the way it looks now. Okay. Something we could do, though, since this entire side has to get divided by uh, pi r, okay, and if we were to go back to the, the scales, we're going to this is like um, S, actually, I guess that would be, this would be like negative uh, pi r k, and this would be like S, since that's like negative and that's positive. If we divide this side by something, we get to divide this by that thing and this by that thing. We get to divide everything by that. Remember when we had, we divided both sides by four, we had to divide both hands by four. We have to divide every term by well, what we're dividing by, we're dividing by pi r. Divide s by pi r, and divide pi r k by pi r. Uh, yeah, and what we've really just done is distributed the, the division to the to every term in the numerator. This one, this one, any other ones that we might have had. Now we have two separate fractions. Can we cancel pi r in this one? Pi r is not a factor of s. That's something we already discussed. Could we cancel pi r in this one? In this fraction? Yes. Why? Because it's on the numerator and denominator. It's in the numerator and denominator, and not only is it in there, it's a factor. Right. It's multiplied by something else. Let's get a color. Pi and r. Pi divided by pi is 1. r divided by r is 1 times k. You can write it like this, s over pi r minus k. Write that. This way, that way, it's all equivalent. So I'm going to come back to that over and over again. As many times as it gets brought up, as many times as I see that mistake being made on quizzes and on tests, I'm going to remind you you cannot simplify a fraction unless you have common factors. And I'll keep reminding you what factors are over and over and over. Okay? It's going to come up tons of times this year. Um, oh, let me, so we could do that a, another way. 
We do 19 again, and we can do it differently if we want to. We're going to solve for h. Look back at what we did. Uh, the first step was to multiply by r. One way to put what we're trying to do here is get h by itself, right? isolate h. So here's h, and then the next step it's r times h. Does that look like it's more by itself? Okay. Not that that won't happen from time to time. Maybe you'll have to do that sometimes. But in this case, we can avoid it. Right? Instead of distributing r and then distributing pi, can we just divide by pi r? Is pi r now, in this case, is pi r a factor of this numerator? How do we know? What's the proof that pi r is a factor of the numerator? Well, the question is, is pi r a factor of, of this? Right? And just like, is 3a a factor, factor of uh, 15? Yes. <coughs> because 3 times 5 equals 15. So if you come over here, is pi r a factor of, let's say, the numerator, the answer is yes. Because, because what? Pi r times h plus k. Yeah, pi r times h plus k gives us pi r times h plus k. <coughs> because pi r times something is the numerator. So yes, it is. So pi r is a factor of the numerator and the denominator. And so uh, we can divide this side by pi r as well. Get h plus k. That looks cleaner, that looks lighter over there. h plus k, it looks uh, a lot easier to handle. What do we do here? Get h by itself. Michael? Subtract k. Just subtract k. We subtract k from here, subtract k from here. s over pi r minus k equals h. We can put those two fractions together if you want, s over pi r minus k. We just need to give k the same denominator. But all we would wind up there in that case would be this guy right here. Give k the denominator of pi r, that's what you'll wind up with. Okay. Um, so this is uh, number six. It's just a equals one half times b1 plus b2 times h. This is one I want you to try on your own. Get B1 isolated. Don't plug anything in for the other numbers. Um, don't just guess one of the multiple choice answers. I want you to do the work and isolate B1. Handle those parentheses somehow. Uh, handle that other that B2 there. Get that somehow. I'll give you a couple minutes and let's see where we are.
to not distribute the, the half and the H into the parentheses. Okay? And that's just a matter of preference. You don't have to not do that. You can distribute, and it will work out exactly the same. But it may take fewer steps if you can think of a way not to distribute that. Because if you distribute a half to, well, let's say H. If you distribute H to both of these, you can see, if we have an H right there, clearly I'm going to have to divide by H at some point, right? Which would be the exact opposite of what I just did. Multiply by H, and then at some point I have to divide by H. So maybe uh, we don't do that in two steps. Maybe we do that in one step. So ideas for something we could do to, rather than distribute, do something else. Uh, divide by one half to both sides. OK, divide by one half, certainly. We have a factor of one half. It multiplies by stuff, right? You can divide it out. Okay. The only thing is, what, what there's, a, there's a, a simpler way to write division by one half. You could write it as multiplication. Two. Multiplication times two. 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 Multiply by the reciprocal of one half, which is two. Okay. So we'll just multiply by two over here. Great, great, great. That eliminates that. We get b1 plus b2 times h. Divide H. Yeah. Okay, let's see if we can divide H. Can we? Yeah, it is a common factor, right? So we'll just do that first, and then we'll look at what you said. The other thing, B1 plus B2. You said divide by B2? Yeah. Divide by B2. Does that cancel? Does B2 cancel out B2? Or you could subtract B2, actually, couldn't you? Okay, now. I think we can all get on board subtracting B2, right? Yeah. So if you could subtract B2, could you also divide it? Like, is there an option? You could. You can divide by B2. But the question is, if you divide by B2, will it cancel out that B2? Yes, because it's a factor, right? OK, so is B2 a factor? That's a great question to ask. Is B2 a factor of this numerator? Is B2 a factor? Well, I guess no, because you can't. Um, you would be able to multiply it by any, by anything to get B1 plus B2. Exactly, exactly. So is B2 a factor of uh, B1 plus B2? No, because let's say I can't uh, fill in uh, B2 times something to get B1 plus B2. So very well put. So we can't divide out B2, but as you said, we could subtract B2. Because B2 minus B2 is nothing. Right? So we leave nothing to add to B1, so B1's by itself. So we will, let's say, subtract B2, so add a negative B2. 2A over H minus B2 equals B1. Why is it like that instead of like this? Yeah. They're the same because I could write 2 over 1 okay. and then multiply straight across and we'll get 2a over 1 times h, which would be 2. Okay. Okay. I guess you can leave that up there as a note. It's not an easy thing to learn, you know, newly. It's, it's a difficult new concept and skill to learn. Okay? But if you just keep in mind that all the same stuff applies. Like if I have a one half times the stuff that you know I want, or at least part of this is what I want. Well, you have a multiple of or a factor of one half, so you can divide by one half, certainly that cancels out one half. It's easier to look at times 2 than divide by 1 half. 
Uh, but that idea works. Then dividing by h, just like if this was a, an 8, I would divide by 8. We can divide by h, common factors of h. If this was b1 plus 5, I'd subtract 5 from both sides. When we put numbers in there, it becomes more clear because that's what we're used to. And when we change them to variables, it becomes uh, more challenging. So don't, if, if these, when, when I was learning stuff like this, learning to solve equations or factor things or whatever it was, and I'd go to my teacher and ask, I'm having trouble with this, how do you do this? And they're like, well, why don't you try doing this? And I think, how do you know that's what you're supposed to do? And the answer is, there is not something you're supposed to do. There's lots of things you could do and it's just knowing, you know, is this mathematically allowed? Can I do this? Yes, I could distribute. I could do that. Right? And that may get me to the answer that I want. And not distributing is, is not more correct than anything else. Distributing is fine. Not distributing, as long as it's all mathematically legal and it does get you down to the B1 beam by itself, that's it. And it just takes practice. It takes a lot of practice. Uh, for it to be be the most efficient you can be, it takes years of practice. Okay. But you guys can, you, you may not do it the fastest way, but you, you can do it. You can isolate these variables if you just take it one step at a time. Okay. Let's go on to another kind. Um, couple steps, maybe do it all the way, maybe one step into it. Does it x, y? It does. So 7x minus x times y equals negative a. Minus 7x will be 0, and 0 minus xy is, uh, is good because that just leaves it as negative xy. And the other side is just whatever results from that. It's just what it has to be. Get y by itself. We do that in steps. Divide by negative x. Negative x. Still be negative seven. If you divide, it's well, x are you saying to do this? Like no, cancel no. out those things? No, I was just like thinking like you could divide seven x by negative x, but it would still be seven x if you divide negative x because then seven x is seven x. So never mind. Okay. Well, would it, if we did divide just as a separate problem, negative seven x by negative x, this would be seven the x would cancel with the x, the negative 1 would cancel with the negative 1, and you'd just be left with 7. That's what I was saying. Um, but then there's no x. x is gone. If we, did, if we tried to do that like this, and then cancel those out and get, what, I don't know, a negative 18 plus 7, maybe that's what that would be. I'm saying maybe that's what that would be because it doesn't work. You can't not You can't do it. Why can't you cancel out this negative x? in the numerator. Michael? Because it doesn't go into negative 18. Yeah, this is not a factor. Negative 18 doesn't have a factor of x. I guess all factors can have factors of negative 1. They would just kind of switch their signs. But yeah, so it doesn't have a factor of x. That's why we can't cancel it out. Always, if we want to cancel things out in the numerator and denominator, they have to be factors uh, of the numerator and the denominator. Here's a real, real tricky one here. 
that. Challenge our brains. That's a good thing. I Y. Six X Y. It wouldn't be so bad if we were solving for X, but we're supposed to solve for Y. So see what you can do with that. Mm -hmm. The thing I'm seeing is this, I by 6x. Most every person will try to do this. Okay. It seems great, because then you can write this, and this is whatever, over 6x, and then we 10y equals, uh, well, let's say 5 over x, and divide by 10. Everything seems to be working out, you know, it's coming up roses. But it, it's not possible. We have to go all the way back to this step. And what we're trying to do is cancel out this 6x. Certainly, we can like cross out that 6x. It's a factor of the denominator. We have to cancel it with a factor of 6x in the numerator. Okay. And just to quickly reiterate my point here, if I want to cancel a 6 out in the numerator, 6x would have to be a factor of the numerator, which I, means I have to write 6x times parentheses, you know, whatever goes in here to get this. But you can see that even though we could write y right here and get 6xy, whatever is here is going to have to have 6 times x multiplied by it. And this doesn't have that. Okay. Uh, we can't multiply 6 by some number, we get 9, unless we use a fraction, and then that's just you know, almost worse. And we can't really multiply x by something to get not x. There's no x here. You need to have an x for that to work. So if you want to cancel 6x, you need to be able to cancel it here and here. And in a third term, in a fourth term, in any, however many terms there are in the numerator. Or denominator, if the denominator has several terms. So we can't do that. It's a common can't just divide out that 6x and not try to divide out a 6x from the other thing. You've got to divide both sides by the whole thing, the whole side by 6x. Alongside this problem, so we can see what we might try to do. Let's say this were 9y plus, let's just say uh, 5. Well, let's make it um, let's make it 4 or 6. Yeah. Okay. So uh, no, I don't want to do 6. Let's just do two different coefficients completely. Um, y plus 3y plus 2y. There you go. 3y plus 2 times 2x. So instead of 9y plus 6xy equals 30, it's just 3y plus 2y equals 30. So what would you do in that case? Combine lights under like terms because we have y's and coefficients of y. So what's the new y term going to look like? 3y plus 2y is? 5y. And what would we do now? Cancel 5, divide by 5 on both sides. y equals 6. So we recognize that these are two like terms, and we add them together, right? We add them together by saying they're both y terms. We add together the coefficients. Five, or, uh, 3 plus 2 is 5. All right. Well, could we look at these as like terms? Are these like terms? Well, not in the strictest sense, right? Not in the sense that we have a number times a y and a number times another y. What we do have is a, a number times y, right? There's the coefficient of y. We could also treat this as the coefficient of y. Now we're looking at 
like terms. Okay. It's not going to look as nice as this, but we can look at them as like terms. This is something times y, and this is something times y. They're the same thing. There's nine of them here, and there's six x of them here. How did we get the new coefficient in this example? How did we get five? <coughs> Where did five come from? Adding three and two, you add the coefficients of the, the two like terms. Right. So we could have written y first, and then three plus two is five. Right? We'll, we'll write that as a little in-between step. Y, you add three and two, and you get five y. Okay. Well, the y term over here, it's not going to get multiplied by five, and it's not going to get multiplied by like 15. Coefficient of this y is going to be the sum of these two coefficients, the sum of nine and six x. Just to show you that it's all okay, what would you get if you took this and you distribute the y? Nine y. Nine y plus six x y. undistributed the y from this here. I can look at this as a, as a parenthesis that got y distributed into it, and I'll just undo that. I'll undo the distribution of y. Well, now it's the same as this problem. It has a coefficient. y has a coefficient equal to 30. How would I cancel out this coefficient? How do you cancel out the coefficient of y? Divide it, it's being multiplied by y. What if I divide by 9 plus 6x? Uh, this is just 9 plus 6x divided by 9 plus 6x, which anything divided by itself is 1. y equals 30 over 9 plus 6x. Be careful if you're going to cancel things out in the numerator and denominator. You need to cancel it out here and here and here. So we can't cancel a 6, but we could cancel a 3 because this can be divided by 3, this can be divided by 3, and this can be divided by 3. 10 over 3 plus 2x works. Or at the very beginning, we could have divided everything by 3. We can just divide both sides by 3 if we want. and be wrong and correct in a race and start over, then um, probably are not going to get these skills down very well. Okay. It's about the effort and the time and the frustration that you're willing to deal with to learn this, this new skill, this new topic, this new concept. You just want to like gently take the stuff that you already know and turn it into this new stuff that you don't know, probably it's not very likely that it's going to happen. I wasn't able to do it. I've never really seen anybody be able to just get it. So it's just going to take time and effort. So let's go on to 1.6, last part of our class here. And coming back to a number line here. So I'm figuring that you guys have seen this before. So we'll, we'll start from here. What, what are we saying? Like if we're saying something about x, what are we saying about x by shading this region here to the right of 2? It's greater than 2. It's equal to 2. So why not? It's not shaded. It's not shaded in. That's how we communicate that. x is greater than 2. Well, what if I did shade that in? How would this expression change? Oh, I know. Put a little equal sign under there, half an equal sign. 
Okay. It can be equal to 2, and if it's not equal to 2, then it needs to be greater than 2. But it can't be less than 2. about that stuff. Let's say we have negative 5, 0, and 3. Let's have open circle, closed circle here. And shape it. We're really saying two things about x, right? Mm -hmm. What's the first thing we're saying about x? It's greater than negative 5. x is strictly greater than negative 5. And, and what? Equal to or less than 3. X is equal to or less than 3. Can X do both of these things at the same time? Yeah. Can one number satisfy both of these conditions? Yeah. It can. So uh, that's why we say and, because it can do this and it can do that. It's not mutually exclusive. It's, if it's 0, it's greater than negative 5, and it's less than or equal to 3. So we can write it like this. Negative 5 needs to be less than x, and x needs to be less than or equal to 3. Right? And between those two things, it looks good aesthetically. It uses less ink. You can write this instead of all that. x is clearly between negative 5 and 3, so like it, it causes your brain to think that as well. Okay. So that's it's more efficient. It communicates a lot of things with uh, less ink, so that's a win. Now if we have Saying two things about x, it needs to be what? Less than or equal to negative five. Less than or equal to negative five. Greater than three. X is greater than three. Can we, would it make sense to put and here? No. No, it can't be. It can't be both of those things. It could be this or it could be that. If it's less than negative five, it can't be bigger than three, and vice versa. So we don't try and write it like this. Let's see what it would look like if we tried. Okay. Here's negative 5, and x needs to be greater than or equal to that, or it needs to be greater than 3. Or sorry, x needs to be less than. x needs to be less than or equal to negative 5. Okay. Well, the way you've written it, it looks like x is between negative 5 and 3, yeah. but when you read the symbols, we're actually saying x needs to be like the left of five, and or it needs to be to the right of three. Okay, that's that's odd. It looks like it's between the two, but it actually is on the left side of the left one, on the right side of the right one. So, so you you could write it. It can't be both of those things. X cannot. There can't be one X that fits in between those two. It doesn't make, it doesn't work. It doesn't make sense. Okay. So these two are what we call compound. Inequalities. There's your and and your or compound inequalities. So they it goes either way. We, if, if we have a graph like this, this is how we would write that. It could be both of those things, right in between those guys. If it's separated that way, you have to write this or that. If it's written this way, you can draw this graph, written this way. You can We want to really get to, we always want to in algebra find out the unknown value. We want to solve an equation. Um, if we come over to the, the scale here and I make this side, and I push this side down, right? So, in terms of inequalities, what would we say about this side compared to that side? It's greater than that side. This side's greater, it has greater weight. Okay? Um, do we still have to do the same thing to both sides? Because uh, you know, it doesn't have to be equal. right? If I add 5 to this side, but only add 4 to that side, isn't this side still bigger? Is there anything flawed about that logic? <coughs> yeah, Michael? Well, if that side's bigger and you add like, the same to both sides, that side still going to be bigger. Right. So that works, definitely. But what if I add 5 to this side and 4 to this side? Add 5 to the bigger side, it's still bigger than the side with 4. Yeah. 
Mm, nothing wrong with that? Well, it's, in the end, yeah, you, you, it is wrong. Okay. You do need to still just do the same thing to both sides. Because if we look at this initial uh, relationship, one way to look at it is this side is some bigger than that side. If we add more to this side and not as much to that side, it's even bigger. It's, it's not how much bigger it was to start with. It's too much bigger. Okay. And in terms of solving for inequalities, you're going to miss some of the solutions if you do something like that. So in the end, what we need to do is still the same thing to both sides. If we want to keep both sides not equal to each other, then we need to keep doing the same thing to both sides so that nothing changes, nothing can possibly change. One side will still stay greater, and the other side will still stay, stay less than. Okay. Um, x to be greater than or equal to 7, we're going to figure out what x would have to be less than or greater than. Okay. So what can we do first? Subtract 11 from both sides, 8x. Greater than or equal to negative 4. And then? 9 by 8. 8x is greater than or in order for this quantity to be larger than or equal to 7, then x would need to be negative 1 half or bigger than negative 1 half. All right. 24. 4x. No, that's not the one I want to do. Let's back up. Let's do. Well, we can subtract 15 from both sides. Negative uh, 12. And so what do we do at this stage? So I've been negative 3. Alright, and we switch the sign. When, when what you're dividing by is a negative, or what you multiply by is a negative, then you need to flip the sign. Okay. And that makes sense. If we go back up here, if we want this quantity to be bigger than something, if we subtract something that's too big, then it won't be bigger than 3. And if we allow x to get too big, then it wouldn't possibly be greater than 3. So we would expect that there should be some like higher bound, like upper bound to x. It can only get so big before we start subtracting too much and getting less than 3. And that, that's not what we want. We're going to get greater than 3. So in order for this to be greater than 3, x needs to be less than 4. Right? Because there's that subtraction. If I'm subtracting something with x in it, I don't want x to get too big, so I want to keep x less than something. And likewise, if I wanted to keep a quantity less than something, then I wouldn't want x, if we're subtracting it, to get too small. I'd want to keep it bigger than some, some value. Okay. Another way that you can uh, prove to yourself that you need to switch the sign is at this stage, we could add 3x to both sides. We get 0, x greater than negative 12 plus 3x, and add 12 to both sides. And we get 12 is greater than 3x. And now we can just divide by 3, and x is less than 4. So that's one way to solve it without any kind of flip the sign remembering rule. The last thing, when we look at a compound inequality, this one, strictly the and compound inequality, is 
two inequalities. So if we have a compound inequality that we're trying to solve, um, like 39, What's really two inequalities? This inequality and this inequality. If it was just this inequality, what would you do first? Subtract four. Subtract four. So you subtract four from this side and subtract four from this side. If it was this inequality, you cover up the left, the left side. Would you do anything different? We still subtract four. You subtract four from this side and from this side. Okay. So what we're really doing is solving two inequalities at the same time. But we still do the same stuff to get x by itself. We'll just do it to the middle, this side, and this side. And then negative 3 less than uh, negative x less than or equal to negative 1. That's not negative 3, that's negative 7. Last thing you need to do, divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1. So we get 7. What should we do? Should we divide by negative 1? Switch the symbols, flip it around. X greater than or equal to positive 1.